So prior to the internet, you probably had to post your running club on posters outside in order to get attention. And you would have a poster that looks like this. You would have Charlotte Running Club with a little bit of information about your actual running club. And then people want to know what type uh, or what time you're going to actually run because you, you have to meet somewhere and you would have these events. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that number one, we can have running clubs, but people also can post events because you need to tell everybody what time you're going to meet. And what we are going to do is we are going to implement a one to many relationship. So our imaginary poster here, we can have one running club and in this running club, we can have multiple events. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a event model wire it up to JPA and add this one to many relationship. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to create an event table that is tied to a club. So this is the parent. So this is the parent. This is the actual parent like we have in our fictional poster. This is the event. And by the time we get done, you'll be able to have running clubs with multiple events and multiple times. And the way that this is going to happen is for each actual event that it makes, it's going to insert the event ID as well too. So you can have an event tied to a club, parent-child uh, parent relationship, one too many. So let's go ahead and let's actually start coding it. Okay, so we are in IntelliJ right now and let's go ahead, let's create our very first model. We are building this thing from the ground up. Okay, so first we need to get out our uh, Lombok annotations. We're just going to go in here, add a couple of Lombok. Let's go ahead and put the builder in here too, just in case we need to test it or we need to create any mappers. So we'll go, go ahead, add a new args constructor. Go ahead and add an all args. And finally, finish it off with an entity so that we can let Spring Data JPA know that this is a model that we need to put in the database okay so then we need to give it an id which also known as a primary key so that each value can be uniquely identified and we can also use that id to tie together other tables and in this case we are tying together the event and the club okay so then we're going to give this a generation type of identity and we will say private long ID. Next thing that we need to do is let's go ahead and give it a name because obviously we need to, there needs to be a name for this event. It could be a 5k, it could be some type of marathon. And a lot of times people like to give their, uh, their events names. Then we'll go here and we will give this a start time. So I'm going to give this date time. So we'll say local date time, local date time. And then we will give this a start time. Then we will go down here, same exact thing. And then we will give it end time. All right, and then go here. And what we need to do is we will give it a private local date time. And we will just give this a created on a lot of times it's good just to add the created on because it's pretty much a give me a gimme and you never know when you might need this creation timestamp or you want to see when a value is updated. So I will go ahead and just add these just on every single record that you make, uh, honestly. <laughs> okay, so updated on, okay, so name, start time, end time, and also, let's just give this a event type. I think that that would also be, and we will just call this private string type. You could go back and change this into an enum and assign specific race types or event types if you want to change it, but I think right now it's okay as a string. So now we're gonna go in here and we're going to create the one-to-many relationship. And luckily for us, it's really easy to create one-to-many relationships in Spring Data JPA. And the way that you do it is you go down to the very bottom, or you could go to the top, but I guess it really doesn't matter. But just for convention's sake, we're gonna go down to the bottom here and we're gonna say mapped by, and we are going to give this the actual uh, club. So we're gonna say the club, 
and we will go ahead and give this a cascade of remove. So whenever the child, key point here, whenever the child is removed, it's going to actually remove, uh, or whenever the parent is removed, it's going to remove the child. So that's what this cascade means. Whenever you see somebody put cascade here and there's detach, merge and remove is if there is a entity that is removed from the relationship then that's when you want to perform the same operation to the child so pretty simple not too complicated and there's different ones for create update and delete and that's what the merge and the persist is if you look at the cascade types okay so i'm going to go here and i'm going to go ahead and import this and I'm also going to import for this hash set. Then we're going to go over to the event side and we are going to uh, wire up the many to one. So there's a one to many and then there's a many to one. And we'll go ahead and do the other side as well. And it's pretty easy. Okay, so now we are in the event side. What we want to do is we want to have a many to one and we will have a join column annotation so we have to give the column of what we want to create and we're only going to create a column on the actual club side so we're going to have the club id or the event side i'm sorry so we'll have the club id and nullable will be false so if we create a club we or if we create an event we also have to tie it to a club you could turn that off if you want to but because that is not the use case that I need. I need this. I need an event to always be tied to a club. You could you make this nullable, either remove it or just uh, don't put it there, or just change it to true. Okay, so that looks good. The way that you test it to make sure that it has indeed wired up correctly is you go over to here and you rerun it, and if everything goes through it will not give you an error. So if we did everything right, there should not be an error. Please don't let there be an error. And it created the table and it created the key that we needed with the with the constraint. So we are good to go. Let's move on to the next item. Also, this is Teddy from the future. I'm gonna go ahead and add one last field and I am going to add a photo URL so that we can have photos for our events too. I forgot about that. So. Just make sure to put that there. So let's go ahead and let's get the repository built. Okay, so let's go into our repository folder and let's go ahead and add an interface of repos of event repository. So we'll call this event repository. Then I'm going to rename this interface because I accidentally uh, called this an interface. And the only thing that we really need is an extends and JPA repository. So we'll go extends JPA repository. The actual type that we are going to pass in is an event. Remember that the actual domain or the actual model that you're using needs to go into here. And we also need the foreign key value, which is going to be a long. So I'm gonna go ahead here and bring in the actual event. After that, we can just go ahead, create our DTO, wire up the link, and then after that, we can start working on our create because we're going to have to create data before we can actually display it because it's a one-to-many relationship. So in your one-to-many relationship, a good rule of thumb is, is if you have a one-to-many relationship, you're going to have to create your, uh, create your create endpoint first. Okay, so this is an event DTO. I accidentally named it an event because I was talking too much. So I'm going to go into here, call this event DTO, and that should be good to go. And because these are going to be almost exactly the same, I'm just going to copy this over and take out these annotations. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm going to get rid of that. Also, we need our data see we need lombok and we also need the builder as well too also let's go into here let's add a no args and let's also add an all args constructor as well too 
So looking good so far. Now what we can move on to is our actual create endpoint, which we will be tackling in the next video. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash the subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.